Have you heard the strange tales of the Whistler? Freedom as a squirrel in a cage. Martha is a cold, mercenary devil. But I'll have freedom beginning tonight. I'll kill her. Friday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, The Whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the amazing story of destiny. At a long table in a New York office sits a little man. He is slightly bald and thin and 45. A mild-mannered, reticent little fellow named Milton Strong. But Milton is anything but strong. For the past 25 years, he has worked in the office and now, as a bookkeeper, is earning the stupendous salary of $35 a week. Milton can't understand why no one appreciates his ability. Milton has grown a bit sour, but he's never had the nerve to ask for a raise. Today, however, is going to be different. His wife has started him out with a lecture, and Milton is going to face the boss in a manner both clear and strong. Mr. Goulthright... I, I'd like to have a word with you. No, a word? Mr. Goulthright, it has long been my decision to approach you on this subject, but for various reasons, a sense of reticence has bade me be silent. Hmm. Uh, how long did it take you to memorize that, Milton? I am 45 years old. I've worked hard and long and faithfully for this company. That's right, Milton, I'm aware of that. You haven't missed a day in all that time. In fact, our efficiency expert is getting out a booklet, and he's using you as the feature. I came to this firm as a lad of 20, and in all the following 25 years... I ask for very little. I did my work well. Sure you did, Milton. And the company appreciates it. I now draw a salary of $35 a week. And I thought that if, uh, after all this time, 25 years, you could see your way clear to afford... Uh, um, Go on, Milton. Uh, to afford... Uh, well, uh, I'm not getting any younger. Well, Milton, strange as it seems, I've just come from a meeting of the department heads. Mr. Unger is the head of the accounting department, and uh, now let me see. Oh, yes, here it is. Yes, here is his recommendation regarding you, Milton. Oh, yes, yes, Mr. Goulthright. He recommends that you be retired at half salary, as of the first of the month, in consideration of your long service and loyalty to the company. Uh, re retired? Oh, oh, but that can't be. Retired? Well, that's what it says here. Yes, but I don't understand. I'm only 45. Why, no one is retired until he's at Why, least... Why, uh... you should be tickled to death. It's like a pension. Uh, but I came here to ask for a raise. A raise? Well, uh, how could that be possible when your department head suggests retirement? Oh, I see. Why, you should be tickled to death. I'd be, and you get two weeks full salary and two weeks vacation besides that full pay. <laughs> you know, Milton, I kind of envy you. So I... I'm fired. Fired? Why, that's crazy. You've been honored. Uh, good night, Mr. Gould. Good night, Milton. After Saturday, you've got nothing to worry about. Nothing. And so poor Milton Strong walks out of the big office and starts home. All the way, his feeling of apprehension increases. His wife, Martha, what will she say? It was his wife who stirred him to the point of demanding a raise. Finally, Milton gets up nerve enough to go home. Home to certain death at the hands of Martha. Is that you, Milton? Uh, yeah, yes, it's me, Martha. Well, where on earth have you been? Can't you ever get it into your head that when I say dinner will be ready by six, I mean it? Well, uh, things happen sometimes to delay me, Martha. Delay you? Huh. I'd like to know what could happen to make you this late. But you see, I, I took some time to talk what to you. What do you uh... mean by coming in this house with that mud on your shoes? Get outside and take those rubbers uh, off. Yes, I forgot. Yeah, you'd forget your head if it wasn't tied on. Yes, Martha, I'll take them off. And what do you mean coming into the house smoking that stinking pipe? Get it outside, do you hear? Yes, Martha, but I started to tell you. Oh, go on out. If you insist on smoking, do it outside. I'll put it out, Martha. I'll put it out. Your dinner's cold and you can eat it that way. Martha, I couldn't help it. I, I went to talk to Mr. Goulthright about the raise. Yeah? What happened? Well, you see, I, I'm a little along in years. Along in years? 
Is that what he said? No, he didn't say it. The head of the department had made a recommendation. For what? Well, now, don't get excited, Martha. I went in to ask for a raise, as you said, and, well, everything had been arranged. Well, did you get the raise? Uh, no. I've been retired on half salary. Retired? Retired? At your age? Are you crazy? Why did you accept? Why? I accept? What could I do? No. You went in to ask for a raise, and you let them throw you out right into the ashes. Oh, what could I do? It was all arranged. Retired at half salary, seventeen fifty a week. And you stood there like a nitwit and let them put that over on but you. But, You stupid, spineless jellyfish. What could I do? You let them push you around for 25 years. You could have been a goose rice job right now. But you're afraid to open up your mouth. I went to his office to demand a raise, but he, he, he beat me to it. Yeah, that's always been the trouble, Milton Strong. Somebody's always beat you to it. Spoke up first. Huh. Retired. seventeen fifty a week. An old man. And how are you going to manage on seventeen fifty a week? Well, I, I suppose I can find something else. I'd like to know what. I'll find something, and until I do, well, your, your sister left you fifteen hundred dollars last. What did you say? Uh, nothing. Uh, that is. Uh, if you think I'm going to touch a dollar of that money while you're still able to stand on two feet, you're crazy. But until I get it's something. It's in the bank, and it'll stay there. Well. And if you want to smoke that filthy pipe, get outside. Yes, Mom. I'll go outside. If you want anything to eat, it's on the kitchen table. I don't want anything. What? Uh, I'll eat it later. After a while, Martha. I want to think. Think? Huh. Don't wear yourself out. I'm going to bed. Good night. I said good night. Uh, yes. Good night, Martha. Good night. <laughs> long past midnight, and Melton has been sitting by the window, staring into the night. Resentment has taken hold of him, and slowly grown into hatred and revenge. Terrible thoughts surge through his brain. Why should I tolerate such persecution? Why should I stand idly by and be pushed around by everyone, belittled by the firm, bulldozed by Martha? She's not a wife. She's a cold, mercenary devil. Freedom. I have as much freedom as a squirrel in a cage. Appreciation, loyalty, 25 years of it. And what do I get? But I'll have freedom. I will have it. Beginning tonight, I'll kill her. I'll go far away. No one will ever know what has become of me. Trembling in anticipation, Milton goes into the small kitchen, opens a drawer, and steps softly to Martha's room, opens her door and stands listening to her easy breathing. Then, Milton leaves the house and wanders about the streets till dawn. Then, at ten in the morning, he steps into the bank. Good morning, Mr. Strong. Oh, uh, I'd uh, like to cash this check, please. Hmm, I see. Uh, purchasing some property, Mr. Strong? Uh, yes. Uh, well, just a second, just a second. Mm-hmm. Oh, very well. How do you want it? Oh, but it, it doesn't matter. Perhaps the small bills would be best. Oh, yes, yes, of course. This is... Two, three, four, three, ah, there you are. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, good morning. Several days later, Milton Strong gets off a train in a western state, takes a small bus for a little mining town 50 miles away. Here in this vast desert country, he will begin a new life, a life of freedom. He will change his name, change his destiny. Milton Strong has ceased to exist. A new man is born. The little bus bounces into Oroville, and two hours later, he is chatting with a prospector in the Gold Plate Bar. Well, I'll tell you, partner, I've been here a couple of years and I haven't struck much yet. Oh, I found a little pay dirt, enough to get along. Uh, there's supposed to be uh, quite a lot of gold here, isn't there? Oh, sure, it's here. It's all over. Sometimes you strike in a day or so, and then sometimes you work for years. And if a man ain't got capital of his own, well, somebody's got to grub stake him. But it's here. Uh, yes, in other words, it's a matter of being uh, optimistic. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yes, well, I think I'd like to try it. Of course, I don't know anything about mining. But... Oh, you don't have to know in this country. It's easy. Anybody can tell gold when he sees it. Uh, where are you from? Uh, uh, Los Angeles. I, I had to come here. The doctor said I should get away from the ocean air. Mm, you don't look sick. Well, I was fortunate to have a checkup in time. I'd like to find a place and try my hand at it. You mean buy a place? Yes, yes. 
Well, I got a nice place. Three-room cabin, good water. There's ore there. You got the patience. Uh, you mean you want to quit? Well, no, I don't want to. But I'm out of funds. I owe everybody in town, so I ain't got a choice. And the fellow who gets it will probably be the one to hit dirt in a week. Is it far from town? Mm, about 25 miles. Kind of lonely for a fellow alone. Mm -hmm. But could I see the place? Sure. I ain't been up there for a week. Been staying here in town while my wife went to Sacramento to try to raise a little money from her uncle. She just got back this morning. She's doing a little shopping now. Uh, did she raise any money? No, just enough to eat on for a few weeks. But we decided to pull out. Besides, I, uh, I hurt my arm last week. Oh, but I'd like to lift the place over. Well, here I am. Believe me, I'm ready to go. I'm dead tired. Oh, um, Kate, uh, this is the gentleman who wants to look the claim over. Thought we might take him with us now. Oh? Well, sure, why not? Uh, this is my wife, uh, Kate Rogers. Oh, yeah, yeah, how do you do? Stranger here? Yeah, that's right. Well, then let's be on our way. I'm sure you'll like the place. The car's just around the corner. Uh, do you want to get your bags? Uh, they're up by the door. I haven't been to a hotel yet. That's good. We'll be to the place in about an hour. <laughs> This is it, friend. But, uh, it looks fine from here. Then have a look inside. And tomorrow my husband can take you over the claim. There are three rooms. Living room, bedroom, kitchen. All fairly good size. Well, that should certainly be enough for one man. You're not married? Uh, no, no, no. I'm alone. Just a minute. I'll light the lamp. No electricity up here. <laughs> Nothing else modern for that matter. <laughs> oh, I understand. <clears throat> yes, it's very nice. I like it. Plenty of good water for drinking and sluicing. The air's wonderful. Uh, that should interest you. Air? Something wrong with you, stranger? Uh, yes, well, just a little touch of lung trouble. Oh, by the way, Mr. Rogers, how did you injure your arm? I, I noticed it's in a sling. Oh, it was my own darn fault. Uh, Kate warned me about digging on that ledge. I fell off and... Well, I didn't break it, but the cuts just don't seem to heal up. Oh, oh I see. Now, uh, to get back to the property, I'm pretty sure there's ore on it. Rich ore. And there's plenty of game around here. Come on, take a look at the bedroom in the kitchen. Uh, this is the bedroom. Steve! Uh... Steve! Oh, what's the matter, Kate? Look, Steve! Look! Yeah? Oh, steady, Kate. Uh, take it easy. But who? Who is he? I don't know. But he's dead, whoever he is. Dead? He's been shot. Oh. No blood around here that I can see. Must have been shot someplace else and made his way to our place. But who? who is he? I don't know. Never seen him before. According to his clothes, I, I'd say he was from out of town. A man from some city, wouldn't you say? Yeah, he must be. About 45 or 50, I'd say. Steve, we'd better go back to town and get the sheriff. Yeah, I guess so. Somebody should stay here. You'll have to drive me in, Kate, and unless you can drive, mister. Oh, no, no, no. I never drove a car in my life. Do uh, you mind staying here? No, no, no. I'll stay. Then come on, Steve. Let's go. <laughs> Twenty minutes after the departure of the prospector and his wife, Milton stares at the body of the dead man. Then, slowly, the realization comes upon him. The man is about his own age, his own size, from the city. And most amazing thing of all, he looks like Milton. A stranger, no one knows his name. But no one knows Milton's name. He hadn't mentioned his name once. Suddenly, he steps to the body and goes through the pockets. He finds identification. Harry Jacobs. Then, in another pocket, he finds... Good Lord. Money, bills. Why, why there must be... One, two, three, four... Why, there's $20,000 here. $20,000. And no one knows who he is. Quickly, Milton reaches a decision. He exchanges papers with the corpse of Harry Jacobs, replaces some of the money in Harry Jacobs' pockets, and keeps some for himself. Then, two hours later, the Rogers return with the sheriff. Know who he is, Sheriff? Nope. I never saw him before. I'd say he was shot about 10 or 12 hours ago. How long do you think he's been dead? Oh, maybe six hours. Well, from all appearances, he wasn't shot here. We ain't been here for a week, you know. Uh, well, let's see if he's got any identification on him. I'd say he was from out of town, from the city. Who are you? Oh, uh, this gentleman is our guest. He's looking the place over with the idea of buying it. I see. Uh -huh. Well, here we are. This man's name is Milton Strong, New York City. Hmm. Now, wait a minute. 
Look at this. A package of banknotes. Money wrapped in bands. Hey, read the printing on those bands. First State Bank of Oroville. Well, what do you know? This must be the fellow that robbed a bank in town this afternoon. What? Robbed the bank? Sure. Ain't you heard? Killed the cashier and got away with 20000 Vice President shot at him, but he got away. Well, there's probably somebody with him. We don't know for sure. How much did they get from the bank? Well, 20000 How much is it there? Well, yeah, let's see. Uh, hey, there's only 10000 here. Well, what do you make of that? Yeah, so far as we know, there was only one bandit. Now, what do you suppose the other 10000 disappeared to? Yeah, well, maybe you had a cohort after all. Hmm. Building strong, eh? Well, I'll we'll just get back to town and notify the authorities in New York. The uh, authorities? Uh, what about his family? Uh, the police in New York will take care of that. Uh, well, that's that. I'll return the money. You can bury him, Rogers. Bury him? Here? Well, certainly. What else could we do? There's no undertaker in Oroville. Body wouldn't keep any time in this heat. Uh, well, thanks, Rogers. I'll be getting back to town. Thanks, Sheriff. Yeah, uh... Did you say your name was, stranger? Hmm? Oh, it's uh, Jacobs. Uh, Harry Jacobs. I see. Well, so long, folks. So, next morning, Milton Strong, the bank bandit, is buried in the sand at the edge of the claim. Yes, Milton Strong is no more. He is now known as Harry Jacobs. In the afternoon, Roger shows him over the property and explains its potentialities. He still hasn't decided, and after dinner, leaves the cabin again. Where's he gone now, Steve? Oh, he's wandered around by himself, trying to make up his mind if he wants a place. Sure is strange acting, Galoot. I'm just a bit suspicious of him, Kate. He said he came from Los Angeles. But how do we know? Yeah, that's right. How do we know? I don't think he's here for his health. And I don't think he's a darn bit interested in prospecting. Steve, what do you think? Tell me. <laughs> well, I... Oh. I went all over the property again. Yeah? Well, you wear yourself out hiking around like that. Mr. Rogers, I've made up my mind. I'll take the place. Yeah? Well, now I'll tell you. Kate and I have been talking things over and... Well, take a good deal to buy the place and finance the workings properly. But I've got plenty of cash and I want the place to myself. Yeah? You uh, got the money with you or in a bank? Yes, uh, I have some with me. Enough, I'm sure, to handle the deal. You say you came from Los Angeles? Yes. You're a funny acting fellow, Jacobs. A little too quiet for my likes. Don't talk much. Just what happened in Los Angeles? What do you mean? You said you came here for your health. If it's lung trouble, as you said, then why don't you cough any? Oh, well, uh, you see it. You got any identification on you, Jacobs? Oh, yes, yes, of course. like to see it, if you don't mind. Yes. There you are. Hmm. Harry Jacobs. New York City. New York, eh? But you said Los Angeles. Well, I, I came from New York to Los Angeles. I, I wasn't in California very long. And you got plenty of cash with you? Oh, yes, yes, enough. How much do you want? Oh, 3000 will do it. Well, three? Well, that seems like a large price for this place. You want it, don't you, Jacobs? Real bad? Oh, yes, yes. I'd like to have it. All right. You and me will drive into town in the morning and have the lawyer drop the papers. Uh, yes, all right. Uh, yes. Well, I, I think I'll go to bed now. It's a bit late. So, good night. What do you think, Steve? He's got the cash with him. This place ain't worth 3000 I know. But if he's got that much, then he's got a lot more. Shall we... Well, I could slip into... No. Just leave everything to me. <laughs> But Milton doesn't sleep well. The strange attitude of Rogers and his wife makes him uneasy. Next morning, he is up at eight and finds Kate Rogers in the kitchen. Oh, uh, good morning, Mrs. Rogers. Morning. Uh, where's uh, Mr. Rogers? Why, he he drove into town to get the lawyer. He, he didn't want to disturb you so early. What? He's going to have the papers made out and bring them back with him. Oh, I thought he couldn't drive. Well... His arm's so much better, he figured he'd be all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, how soon will he be back? Should have been here half hour ago, nine o'clock. Oh, well, there he is now. How about some breakfast? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, so you up, are you, Jacobs? Yes. 
Did you get the papers arranged? We don't have to sign any papers, Jacobs. I won't be selling the place. Why not? I don't have to. I'll have all the money I need in a few days. But you said that you... I uh, haven't been to any lawyers. I've been to the sheriff's office. Sent a wire to New York. And I got an answer. What? what? A wire? Well, what about it? Put up your hands, Jacobs. Put them up. You may be a mild-looking little guy, but I'm taking no chances with a killer. What? What did you say? You're wanted by the New York police for banditry and murder. Oh, no, but it's, it's a mistake. Here's the telegram. Your description. Read it. Yes, sir. Harry Jacobs, 45, 5 feet 6, as per your description, wanted for robbery and murder of bank messenger. $10,000 reward. Dead or alive. $10,000 reward. Get that? Oh, no, 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 no. It's all a mistake. You, you don't understand. I understand, all right. You and your partner came out here to hide out. Probably robbed a half dozen banks in the way. Partner? What partner? The fellow we buried the other day. That Milton Strong. The sheriff said there must have been two bandits. And there was only 10000 on him. What become of the other 10000 well, I, I tell you, I, I had nothing to do with the holdup. You carry too much cash on you, Jacobs. If you got 3000 you must have more. You were too anxious to get this place. And it ain't worth more than 1000 Yes, but you're wrong, Rogers. You're going back to town with me, Jacobs. I'm collecting that 10000 reward. No, 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 please, no. Don't take me back. I, I can't go back to New York. I can't. I can imagine that. They'll fry you. you you've got to listen to me. You, you've just got to... Search his stuff, Kate. He's got the money someplace. No, wait, 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 wait. I've got the money. And here it is. The money from the bank. There. Gee, that's it. The same bank wrappers. And yeah, it's 10000 No, there's more. Another thousand. The 10000 with the wrappers belongs to the bank. The rest is mine. That's all we need to know, Jacobs. Come on. And I hope the sheriff don't spill this before you're locked up. The town would tear you to pieces. No, look, look, just listen to me. I swear, I never saw that dead man in my life. I did come here to get away from embarrassing circumstances. I, I wanted to lose myself. After you went for the sheriff, I searched the man's pockets. I found his identification. And because he resembled me, I switched his papers with mine. And then, then I found the money. I decided to keep some of it. I am Milton Strong, and the dead man was Harry Jacobs. What a story. Who'd believe that? Don't send me back to New York. There's no reward for me. The troops would come out and you wouldn't get a dime. Now, here, you keep this money I took from the robber and let me go. No one will ever know the difference. Oh, no. I'm not that dumb. I'll turn you and the money in and collect the reward. I'd rather get it legally. Come on, Jacobs, before the town gets wise. Milton is handed over to the sheriff and locked up in the flimsy jail. They have wired New York, and a detective with extradition papers is flying west. But unfortunately, the word has gotten around town that the jail holds the murderer of the bank cashier. A crowd of men, silent men, has gathered in the front of the jail. I don't know what we're going to do about this, Rogers. Are you sure you didn't say anything about it? I didn't say a word. I don't know how they found out about it, but maybe some of your deputies talked. I warned them not to say a word. I don't mind crowds that shout and yell. I'm afraid of the crowd that just stands and says nothing. They're sure on the warpath. Yeah. A detective from New York should have been here an hour ago. I sent a car to meet the plane. Maybe the plane was late. Yeah. Well, if the crowd starts anything, somebody's going to get hurt. Hey, you fellas better get your shotguns ready. They might break out any minute. All right, Ray, don't worry about that. Well, Jacobs, got anything more to say? But I... I've told you that I'm Milton Strong. I had nothing to do with the bank holdup. Well, that crowd looks surly, so I guess I better put you back in the cell. Wait a minute. Here comes your car, Sheriff. It's about time. Go out and tell Jake the driver to stay around the back of the jail and stay in the, in the car. Don't let that crowd know what he's doing. Right, Sheriff. I get you. You Sheriff Talbot? That's right. And I'm mighty glad to see you. I'm at 10 o'clock. Yeah, I know, I know. Now, let's get down to business. The crowd outside is going to get impatient pretty soon. Crowd? What do they want? Yeah, what they call justice. This fellow here held up the bank and killed the cashier. But I wanted to be sure he was Harry Jacobs. He had identification on him, but he claims he's Milton Strong. Milton Strong? Yeah. We buried Milton Strong several days ago. We found part of the bank money on his body. Milton Strong? Yeah. But if he's really Harry Jacobs, I'd prefer you get him out of here and deal with him in New York. I had one lynch in here, and I don't want another. But he isn't Harry Jacobs. I knew Harry personally. He ain't Harry Jacobs. No. But he is Milton Strong. Harry Jacobs was a professional holdup. But not Milton Strong. Then we really buried Harry Jacobs. What do you mean? I took this fellow to my claim with the idea of selling it to him. Yeah. We found a dead man in my cabin. 
I came after the sheriff, and this fellow claims that while we were gone, he exchanged papers with the dead man. Well, from all appearances, that's just what he did. Yeah, but why should he do that? Well, Milton Strong is wanted in New York, too. I... I'm wanted in New York? What, what for? As if you didn't know. Well, what's he done? What's he wanted for? Hey, that crowd is starting. Get him out of here. Hurry. Out the back way. The car's waiting. Let's go, Milton. You can catch 11.30 train. I'll stall him off as long as I can. All the way back to New York, Lieutenant Clark will not talk. They ride across the country in utter silence. And three days later, Milton sits in the office of Inspector Burns of the New York police. Milton... On the morning of July 20th, did you cash a check at a bank at 21st in Lexington? Uh, yes, I did. A check made out to you by your wife? Yes. Are you sure your wife wrote that check? Well, uh, yes, yes, she did. Why did you leave town the same day? Well, I, I went on a vacation. Why didn't your uh, wife go with you? Why? Well, because I, I, I wanted to be alone, that is. You might as well tell the truth, Milton. You haven't a chance to get out of it. But I... No, I didn't. 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 Sorry, Milton. But we have proof. We have a witness. A witness? Yes. Bring in the witness, Lieutenant. Come in, please. Where have you been, Milton? Oh, Martha! Why didn't you let me know where you were? Oh, no, please, please, Martha. Let's don't talk about it here. What are you doing in Arizona? I was just taking a little vacation. I was going to write you. I tried to buy a cabin in the mountains. For you and me, Martha. For us. What? Don't you dare like that type. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, Martha. I had to quit smoking. I wasn't even conscious of what I was doing. And what are you doing without your rubbers? You know it's raining. Well, I took them off outside, Martha. Come on, Milton. Let's go home. I have a few things to talk over with you. Yes, darling. Well, come on. Get up out of that chair. Yes, yes, darling. Just a minute. What about this charge, this check forgery? Forgery? Oh, I wrote that check. I remember the whole thing now. Then what about the charge of wife desertion? He's come back, hasn't he? But we brought him back. Well, I wrote the check so he could make a down payment on a house. But like the child he is, he, he wanted to take a trip and hunt gold. He's always been an adventuresome soul. Well, go on, Milton. Get along. And if I dare light that dirty pipe, I'll shake your head off. Go on, go on. Yes, yes, darling. <laughs> well, uh, good day, uh, gentlemen. Well, it just goes to show you that no man can escape his destiny. No man can change fate. And when he attempts to do so, he only conjures up far worse conditions for himself. Poor Milton Strong ran away from things and ended up at the starting point, back with Martha. But he's happy now. Martha's nagging is now sweet music to his ears because Martha really loves him. Out west, they almost lynched him, nearly took his freedom away. But Martha saved him. She lied for him. Yes, Milton did forge that check. He was even going to kill Martha. But he got cold feet the moment he walked into her room. But Milton will be a good boy now. In his search for so-called freedom, he came close to the jaws of death. Lucky Milton. <laughs> CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed by Wilbur Hatch and conducted by Ivan Dittmars. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week, same time, I, The Whistler, will return to tell you another unusual story. Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>